What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Jay Campbell. Hunter Williams. And we are back talking today about alternate day fasting, which really is the metabolic blowtorch diet slash 30 days to shred slash guaranteed shredded versus intermittent fasting, which is like, you know, the old school, you know, th- shout out to Martin Burkans, like lean games, which is like, you know, the 14 to 16 hours uh, without food, right? So we want to compare and contrast both of these protocols. Let us just first say that any form of fasting done, whether it's 14 to 16 hours or, or, you know, in the preferred way, which we like to think of like 18 to 20 or plus hours is better than not fasting at all, right? Again, mm-hmm. through the amazing metabolic cascades of autophagy and hormesis, which both, you know, essentially provide a cellular fum- fumigation, uh, you will live longer and stronger, scientifically proven by doing this for your cells, for your body, for your biological systems. And so again, we're obviously big supporters and big proponents of this. Now, this video, we really want to compare and contrast why, you know, we, I won't say we believe, we know alternate day fasting to be better than just normal, you know, 14 to 16 hour intermittent fasting protocol. So I'll just start it off and then I'm going to let you finish. Uh, The first reason is by alternate day fasting, client slash person slash patient adherence is way greater because you can live your life in a, from a standpoint of like every other day I can eat and every other day when I eat, I can eat relatively, again, relative to body fat and inflammation levels. I can eat relatively anything I want, Mm -hmm. which doesn't hinder you from a lifestyle perspective. You can have, you know, your restaurant dates with your girlfriends or your boyfriends or your coworkers or whatever on the days that you're quote unquote eating. Okay. So that's like the biggest thing adherence to a quote unquote nutritional dietary lifestyle protocol is always the biggest thing, right? Because as you know, most people quit because the diet or the lifestyle is too difficult. So in this lifestyle, it's simple. Now to add to that, there's also no meal prep required, right? Because you're eating every other day. So it's like, if you understand, and I'm not saying that meal prep is wrong, right? Because again, if you're obese and you got a lot of weight to lose or you're highly inflamed or uh, you know metabolically dysregulated, maybe it is going to be better for you to have a food service prepare you, you know, fresh cooked meals, or even you could just meal prep in your you know house in your refrigerator and put everything in glass uh, dishes. So you have the right type of meals on your eating days, but it's still a lot simpler than a lot of other structured dietary protocols out there where you do have to prep your meal and measure it and count your calories and, you know, count up all that stuff. You don't have to do that on this diet. So that's like number one, number two, and I'm gonna let him finish with all the rest of them after I do the second one. The second one is the fact that every other day provides ample caloric intake, which is most important for muscle glycogen refueling on the days that you train. So in our protocol in this every other day or alternate day fasting lifestyle, we train on the days that we eat, right? So you're never going to be at risk, depending on your age, you know, as a trainee or as a conditioned athlete of training in a fasted state, which as Hunter and I both know, and a lot of people don't know is extremely dangerous if you train in any type of intensity that will allow you to build muscle, which is normally positive muscle failure. Because again, what people don't understand when you get into your late thirties and your mid forties, and even into your early fifties, you don't have any uh, synovial fluid in your joint capsules. So if you're training at 16 to 18 to 20 hours without food, and you're training again at an intensity level Mm -hmm. necessary to build muscle, which by the way, very few of you do that, you know, it's not a attack, but as you know, Hunter and I observe when we go to the gym, we train together. And you know, I had a call with Chris Gethin tonight. We were always talk, we always joke about this. You know, he always likes to say, "Oh no, most people they just warm up. They don't know how to lift, right?" Yeah. But most people, this is something you don't have to worry about. For those of you that do train at an intensity necessary to build muscle over time as you're aging, you don't want to be lifting, forcibly contracting muscle fibers, generating maximum force and torque and output. When you're in a glycogen depleted state, because again, the risk to injuries due to the lack of synovial fluid in the joint capsules is extremely high. Now, again, most people will you know, contest that and come at Hunter and I when we say that because they never train at an intensity level necessary where they would ever notice that. But for those of you guys that do, and I know a lot of you guys out there that follow us do train at that intensity level, never ever train when you're muscle glycogen depleted, which again is normally from 16 to 18 to 20 hours. Now, again, it flies in the field of a lot of people who say, oh, I love training fasted, Jay. I train at 16 hours without food all the time and I lift heavy and I'm muscular and I do really well. Again, I will tell you that depending on your age, you're putting your body at great risk. Again, only assuming that you are training at the intensity level that you're telling us that you are. From most of the people that Hunter and I observe in the gyms, you never are. Nope. 
And having worked with a lot of people, I can say it's amazing, especially it seems like a lot of women do this. They will train fasted in the morning and then not eat until like, you know, 12 or two or three in the afternoon. And when I get them to introduce carbs before their workout, it's like, man, my workouts are so much better. I'm recovering so much better. I have so much more energy, energy in my workouts. It's because you have energy. So let's go to the idea of like, why is alternate day fasting better than intermittent fasting? Well, one, it's more closely aligned with the natural rhythms that our body has. Right. So for thousands of years, specifically if you have like Northern European ancestry, but even like, you know, depending on other parts of the world, humans hunted and gathered, meaning that they would go out, they would not have food for a day, two, three days at a time, and then they would feast. So alternate day fasting simulates a feast famine cycle. That's so right. whereas one day you're in a pretty big, if not like giant caloric deficit, meaning that you don't have calories at all, or you just eat one meal or two meal, two small meals. And then the next day you're in this caloric surplus. Now what's great about that is one, it keeps our metabolism high yep. over time. So when you do that, you're constantly going back and forth from deficit to surplus, deficit to surplus. And in doing so, your body is always having to adapt. It becomes more metabolically flexible. And over time, your base metabolic rate is going to go up That's right. because you're doing that. So over time, your metabolism is going to stay high. Where a lot of people mess up is they do intermittent fasting. The first 30 or 60 days, they get good results because they you know fast for 16 hours and then eat in an eight-hour window. And then like after day 60, it starts to slow down. The reason is because your body is adapting. The body's really smart, so it knows, okay, I've got to adapt to this amount of calories in this window that I'm getting, and now I'm going to downregulate the metabolism to make my new caloric uh, baseline like 1,800 instead of 2,000. Yeah. And so when you're doing that over time, your metabolism actually slows down, and then you stop losing fat, and then you just go back to right where you were, and then you usually will bounce back up. However, when you're doing alternate day fasting, you're always deficit surplus, deficit surplus. So over time, your body is always in a state of change to where it never really reaches homeostasis, and that helps keep the metabolism high over time. So like Jay said, it's huge for training to have that caloric surplus on those training days because I can get the energy into my body and into my muscles to recover properly and everything. And then on my fasting days, I can I don't have to worry about training. I do my low intensity cardio. I go into a fat burning state. I'm basically in ketosis all day. And so I burn fat. So over time, my body is staying metabolically flexible. I'm switching between glucose and fat utilization for fuel. Whereas if I just do intermittent fasting, I'm never really going the length of the fast that I need in order to uh, burn ketones and be in a state of ketosis. A lot of people can fast for 16 hours and they really don't get into a state of ketosis. Wow. I would argue, you know, it's a little bit different for men and women, but I would argue that for men, we know that fasting really doesn't kick in until like 18 to 20 hours. When you have catecholamine production. Exactly. And so you're going 16 hours, you're really not doing anything different for your body than if you just ate between the 12 hour window. So I don't think that a 12-hour fast is different from a 16-hour fast. A 16-hour fast is vastly different from a 24-hour fast because that you know four to eight-hour window window after 16 hours is going to be huge, and that's where the, all the real benefits, you know, the autophagy, the ketone burning, like everything that happens that we want from fasting, doesn't really come until that time. So that's where a lot of people mess up is they will do intermittent fasting, they do the same window every single day. And a lot of people too, I'll talk about this, they do the, the OMAD, the one meal a day. Yeah. And they'll get good results with that at first. And you know, that's good. Like we're saying, it's good to fast. If you do that for too long, your body's going to downregulate and then just adapt to that amount of calories. And over time, your and thyroid- plus a lot of guys though, especially men, will overeat. Yeah. And, and then you're like, home. oh, I can eat whatever I want. And then you just go for the cookie jar and everything else, you know, and that one thing. And then you don't get the requisite amount of nutrients- that your body needs and you often have to go to junk food to feel like you're full. And then that just ends up causing more problems. And, and, and you know, just, we, we've nailed everything, but just to add one more point to this, like I would just in, in challenge or encourage any of you that are quote unquote 14 to 16 hour intermittent fasters. And you've been doing this for a long time. The true key, he already said it is getting into uh, fight or flight hormonal response, which is again, catecholamine release, which doesn't happen according to all the science. And of course, to, the experiential body of practice and work that we have in our both ourselves and all the thousands of people that we've worked with both online in person okay is that if you extend your fast four hours so if you're a 16 a 14 to 16 hour faster and you extend from 18 to 20 you will dramatically lose stubborn fat that you probably have had for a long time that you've plateaued at because it, for all the reasons that he said 
because your body is so used to fasting for 14 to 16 hours and for fasting for 14 to 16 hours, you're never getting into the deeper cascades of autophagy and hormesis, which again are the true benefits of fasting that what we call the cellular fumigation, the getting rid of senescent cells, right? So extend your fast by four hours. Again, if you're 14 to 16 or you're 16 to 18, extend by four hours and watch the stubborn body fat fall off you. If you're a man, it'll be less body fat in the belly and the you know, the belt area region of your body. And if you're a woman, you will go down in dress sizes because you'll lose fat in the glute ham, you know, hips tie in ratio, which is where most body, most people, both male and female store their stubborn fat. So again, we love alternate day fasting. Fasting is the key to living a longer and stronger life. But if you are a person right now, that's just doing intermittent fasting for 14, to 16 hours, we highly recommend that you look into our stuff. Yeah. It's all, it goes, again, it'll just all go back to the feast famine cycle of how important that is. All the research obviously points to it. And then, you know, research aside, look at experiential body of work. This is what we've practiced. You know, I for almost a decade now, Jay for multiple, literally 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Multiple decades. And it's just, there's nothing better than doing this diet. And again, too, if for anything, it just makes your lifestyle that much easier to where I can enjoy days when I'm eating. I don't have to feel like a stiff or a social, right. you know, social outcast or anything. And then days that I'm fasting, I don't even have to think about it. So. Yeah. So guys and gals, if this stuff, you find this valuable, head on over to my email list. It's join.jcampbell.com. You'll be with 25,000 other men and women who receive amazing emails every single day, not on Sundays usually, but uh, you know, talking about this kind of lifestyle. So again, I'm Jay Campbell. Hunter Williams. So we'll see you guys very soon. Peace. What's up, peeps? If you find my videos valuable, join my email list where I send daily emails to 25,000 of the most elite humans on the planet. Click the link in the top of this description or head on over to join.jcampbell.com.